Well, cool. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, graph this ellipse. And looking at this, this does not look like very much fun um, because it's not in our standard form that we know how to graph. So what we need to do is we need to write it into that form um, by completing the square. But before we complete the square, we want to be able to get our x and y's on the same side. So to do that, I need to add a 25y squared to both sides. And I need to add 100y to both sides. Now, uh, I know I'm just adding them onto both sides. I'm going to leave the negative 6 over on here. And I'm just going to rewrite this. And I'm going to make sure I rewrite this with the y, y squareds and the x squareds and write it in my descending order. So therefore, I have 4x squared minus 24x plus 25y squared plus 100y equals negative 36. Now, I know, excuse me, uh, there is one negative. Um, when you're rewriting that, we want to have this group just like this, because what we're going to do is we're going to be um, you know, completing the square. So we want to have it as an x squared, uh, the quadratic term, then the linear term. Just be careful when you're you know, reorganizing a polynomial to make sure that you just have the correct uh, values uh, for the coefficients. You know, if it's negative, then make sure when you rewrote it, it's still negative. If it's positive, it's still positive. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to create our binomial squares. And to do that, we need to do that by completing the square. So to first complete the square, we got to get rid of our coefficients for our quadratic term. So we have to factor them out. But we're only going to factor them out out of our two terms that are related um, with our variable. So I'm going to factor out a 4. So over here, I'm going to factor out a 4. And over here, I'm going to factor out a 25. Or you're going to factor out your co you're going to factor out the coefficient. So here I'll factor out a 4. Here I'll factor out a 25. You, don't need, you could factor out an x and a y, but that's going to defeat the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. So we're just going to factor out our coefficient. So 4 is going to leave me with x squared minus 6x. And then over here, it's going to be plus 25. And y squared plus 4y. OK, equals negative 36. All right, so now what I have done is now I have created two binomials that have a coefficient for the quadratic term is 1. And that's very important because now the next step is to take b divided by 2 and square it. So remember, when we have quadratics, ax squared plus bx plus c. It doesn't matter if we have a c or not. When completing the square, you take b divided by 2 and square it. So I'm simply just going to take negative 6 divided by 2 and square it. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is equal to 9. And then I just take 4 and divide by 2 and square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take both of those values and add them inside of my parentheses. So I have 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 25 times y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals negative 36. Now, remember, there's a very important point. I said equals negative 36. So since I have an equal sign, if I'm adding some numbers on the left side, I got to make sure I add it on the right side, right? That's what I did up here. I added 25y squared here, so I had to add 25y squared over here. Well, it's the same thing. Just because you're adding them inside the parentheses um, doesn't mean you don't have to add it on the other side. But you got to be careful. When, since we added inside the parentheses, not outside the parentheses, we got to be careful. Why do we have parentheses? The reason why we had those parentheses is because 4 is being multiplied by every term inside this parenthesis, and 25 is multiplying by every term there. So really, I didn't add 9. I actually added 9 times 4. I didn't add 4. I actually added 4 times 25. So on the other side, i got to make sure I add those values. So that's going to be plus 9 times uh, 4, and then plus 4 times 25. OK, the important thing of why we did this was to create a binomial squared, right? So now that we, know a, a, now that we have a perfect squared trinomial, I can factor this to a binomial squared, which would be x minus 3 squared um, plus 25 times y plus 2 squared. So what I'm doing is I'm pretty much factoring each of my perfect squared trinomials. And when factoring them, they become my binomial squareds equals, well, 30, negative 36 plus 9 times 4 is positive 36. So those um, add up to 0. And 4 times 25 equals 100. Okay, So all that equals 100. But again, we don't want it to equal 100. We got to make it equal to a, uh, 1. So I'm going to divide 
by 100. And when dividing by 100, what I get is here, um, OK, so when I divide by 100, I can reduce. 4 over 100 is 1 25th. And 25 over 100 can reduce to 1 4th. Therefore, my final equation, x minus 3 squared over 25 plus y plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. Now we can go ahead and graph this. So by go looking at this graph, or looking at my equation, I know now know that the center is, remember, h comma k. Well, the center in this case is going to be negative 3, I'm sorry, positive 3, negative 2. Um, also notice that the larger number in the ellipse is going to be your a squared, right? So I can say that a squared is equal to 25, and b squared is equal to 4. Therefore, taking the square root of both sides, a equals 5 and b equals 2. Now, that's very important because that's going to tell me how to find um, my uh, co-vertices and vertices. But I also need to determine what my c, because c is going to be the distance from the center to the foci. <clears throat> OK, so the relationship um, for to find c is c squared equals a squared minus b squared, where c squared is going to equal 25 minus 4, which is so it would be 25 minus 4, which equals 21. c squared equals 21. That means c equals the square root of 21. OK, so now I have all this information. Um, if it's OK with you, I'm going to erase all of this. And I'll write the equation over here. Rosa, could I get you to come to the main office, please? Rosa, would you come to the main office, please? Thank you. So we're going to graph and label all the information. All right, so when graphing, the first thing I always like to graph is the center, because that's kind of like the easiest. Um, so the center is at 3 comma negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Uh, that's the center. OK, now remember, <clears throat> we determined that um, the larger number was our a. Now, our a lies on our major axis. And since our major axis, our a, I'm sorry, our a is under the x, that means my major axis is going to be horizontal. So to determine my vertices, all I'm simply going to do is go a distance of a from the center along the major axis to find each vertice. So since the distance from the center to a, to a vertex is 5, and I determine that my major axis is horizontal, horizontal I'm simply just going to add 5. I'm just going to go 5 to the right and 5 to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I have determined my two vertices. Now, we are still going to want to label these vertices. We need to label the center, which is, all right, which is 3 comma negative 2. So basically, all I did was I added 5 horizontally, right? So therefore, I'm just going to um, add and subtract 5 from 3. So basically, what I'm doing is just doing 3 plus or minus 5 comma negative 2. The x coordinate, or the y coordinate, you can see is the same as negative 2. So really, what that is is going to be 8 comma negative 2 and negative 2 comma negative 2. Um, there's my vertices. Now let's do the covertices. Covertices has a distance of b from the center. So we do it as b was 2. Now, the covertices lie on the minor axis, which is perpendicular to our major axis. So I'm simply just going to go up 2 and down 2. Those are my covertices. To determine the covertices, rather than adding and subtracting to the x coordinate, I'm now going to add and subtract 2 from the y coordinate. And you could easily just you know, add them up in, in your head and, and write them down. Um, but you can see we have 3 comma negative 4 and 3 comma 0. All right, the last one is going to be our foci. And foci, a lot of times, is a trouble, especially when we have like the square root of 21. Now, looking at the square root of 21, I can you know, use a calculator and try to approximate, uh, approximate that value. But I just know by my understanding of square roots, it's between 4 and 5. Uh, because 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25. So 21 cents is in between there. I know it's like 4 and a decimal. Now the foci also lies on the major axis with the center and the vertices. So simply what I'm just going to do is count 4 and a decimal, you know, 4 and a little bit more um, on each side. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll say the foci is there. 
and my foci will be right there. So it's very close to my um, vertices. <clears throat> However, when I'm actually writing in the value of those coordinates, I will use the exact um, coordinate, or at least the exact value. So just like for my vertices, how I added and subtracted 5, for my, covertice, or for my foci, since they're on the same axis, they're going to have the same y coordinate. So then I'm just going to add and subtract the square root of 21, comma, negative 2. Now here, since we can't evaluate, they'll be approximate. I'll just do 3 plus square root of 21, comma, negative 2, and 3 minus square root of 21, comma, negative 2. And then, now that I have everything, oops, I can just go ahead and simply graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the equation of ellipse by writing it into your vertex form. Thanks.